Hey guys, more CDIO stuff happening. Um, yeah, so I'll swing in this. And uh, we got a crazy push in the pre market. Um, and a lot of these crazy pushes like can actually be quite bearish on just because of how aggressive it is, straight up only from, you know, deep support levels. Um, and if I see a lot of stalling, especially near high a day, um, I actually get pretty uh, bearish on the structure, right? Uh, everyone's kind of expecting it to go straight up. And uh, it starts stalling. Uh, buying, you know, doesn't come into the stock. Pulls back and uh, maybe gives some type of long trapping move, right? So, um, so we got the big push. Pull back to the 1 minute 20. And you see how a lot of these... Uh, potential long trap initiations go and we saw this on TOP um, you get a pullback to support the volume gets really low and then a big burst in volume right kind of this candle but especially this candle pushing towards highs right um, and one thing I always like to see on this is the same thing with TOP is You know, it's really these aggressive moments that I like to use the book map and try to read the bid support, right? Because we're noticing the same thing. Um, you get these aggressive pushes. So here's this aggressive push in, in the pre-market, right? You could see where the ass are stacked higher, right? It even pulled these ass to the left to, to initiate the push towards 1.7s. Um, and here's all the initial buying. It pulls back, and this is about one minute. You start to see them stack. They ask, uh, first of all, after one thing I like to see is after the initial burst where everyone's kind of chasing or covering, um, I like to see the buying on the ask after the initial squeeze. So we're not getting a lot of buying, and we're getting ass stacked here, here, here. You can actually start to see them stack the ask way before the stock pulls right and you got about um you know 30 40 seconds to um react to, to, to price action like this and you see that there's no bids lower so i'm like okay cool that's a potential kind of long trap because you remember we have 174 from the day before uh kind of a long trap at the top which is what you like to see uh but i said on my discord i was like hey guys uh this is good uh, but keep in mind the lower high paint, right? 174 is high, and we got two lower highs painted right below this. So um, lower high paint, especially on crazy, crazy, crazy strong stocks, um, is always something to pay attention to. You never know. You never know if this is going to be the long trap at the top that pulls. You don't know if it's going to keep soaking and then use the market open volume to squeeze. You don't know. You don't know. You, you just play, you know, you play the patterns. You get good averages, you keep the risk tight, um, and you hope the pattern works, right? And in strong markets, especially in crazy stocks like this, um, you can have the, the biggest brain short entries, right? You could be shorting in the 165s, 170s up here and have a great average. In strong markets, uh, things can, can, you could just, they, they soak at support and squeeze you again, and you just keep playing your patterns on extended tickers, especially ones that have been squeezing shorts, up only, um, and eventually, uh, you know, you'll get an unwind, and often a really big unwind. Um, but you gotta keep it tight, keep the risk tight, because you're gonna take losses in a strong market. Short at key levels, right? I've been telling my room, if you're gonna be shorting plays like this, you gotta be shorting above, I would say, what is this lower high? 164. You gotta be, you gotta be smacking this above 164. You know what I mean? Like, like that's when you really gotta. You don't want to wait for the dump and chase in the in the in the 150s, right? This is how uh, in strong markets, um, chasing on these, you know, little bounces. You know, you, there's always a chance like a little bounce like this rolls over and deep fades, and you know, and it, you kind of get bailed out. Uh, but a lot of times, stuff like this happens where now you have a bad average, um, and your risk is really big. And you, you're not really giving yourself enough space for the play to work, right, uh, without taking on a lot of risk. So, market open. I already knew the volume was going to be insane. I just really wondered what they were going to do with this structure, right? They kind of consolidated it. I'm like, oh, maybe. You never know. Um, but I think on the book, 
at Market Open. I always like, one thing I've been really liking about Bookmap is I can see where the orders are. Um, so this is Central Time, by the way, so this would be Market Open. And I saw at Market Open that there was a big ask right at 170s, and I'm like, all right, um, my average is in the 160s, I will just risk this ask getting broken. I'll just put my risk right at it, or, or sometimes I even put one cent above it just to make sure it actually gets seen through. Um, and if I get squeezed, I'll come back and uh, try to short another pattern. So, uh, obviously the stick is super, super, super extended, right? We're, we're on like day three of a massive massive like up only up only up only then another like more up only so it's like um i get very bearish the more up only swipes there are and this just goes to show you how many there can be right this is one up only that's two three four five like it's 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 insane what some of these tickers can do and it's important to remember tickers like these um because it shows you the potential of these types of plays um but as soon as this had up only and it pulled back, um, I actually already started putting on a little bit in the 170s. And then what I like to do is I like to wait for the soak, even if it's just on the one minute. And I like to see it, you know, here's a one minute nine. It starts to, re, you know, it dips into the low 160s, pushes back above 170. And I just made an instant read right here. I'm like, if this starts to stall even a little bit on this push, um, which we could see that here. And I was also watching a book map. I saw the reclaim push into the 170s. I didn't see a lot of bids below. I uh, put on a starter, and then once it cracked the 170s here, I started shorting the rest, right? So um, I pretty much just had a 170 average, which is where I stopped out to begin with. So kind of went right back in where I lost. And then, you know, an important thing to know about CDIO is we just went through two days of, like, relentless short squeezes with infinite bid support short squeezes with infinite bid support short squeezes with what looks like infinite bid support <laughs> um what you'll see what stocks what strong stocks at the top tend to do is they tend to repeat the same price action that they showed on the front side right so you'll see you know these you know, bearish looking candles, get reclaimed, bearish looking fake breakouts, get reclaimed, you know, they're, they're holding support, holding support, super grindy, super grindy, the backside is not clean, any any big dip gets rebought and pushed, because longs at this point have been trained that, you know, deep pullbacks on the stock always, re you know, always go back up, so because they're always going back up, um, longs are, you know, of course, super bullish on price action like this. And also shorts on the flip side, even, you know, and I saw this in my room and I don't blame people for thinking this way. Um, cause it's very, uh, it's very counterintuitive to think otherwise is, you know, they, they'll short, be short up here or short on these candles. Um, and they, and they start hype, they start covering, um, really early, right? They just start covering at support. They short cover at support. They're just like taking these like... 10 15 percent moves but the way a lot of really 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 strong multi-day runners unwind and this could be in a potential unwind this could be potential um top top right maybe there's probably you know might get might have a week day tomorrow followed by a strong day or two at the end of the week or early next week and you know there'll be a bunch of games because the liquidity is so high in the ticker uh but um strong stocks always look strong at the top they always give aggressive backside moves to shake people out, um, and then they unwind, right? So this is why a lot of people have a hard time. You know, look at trades like Top, look at trades like Yell, look at any of the penny runners like TTOO. Um, you know, there's a few penny names that are like are essentially companies going bankrupt and get you know plays like AXLA and, and tickers like that will go straight down, but a lot of times. Um, there's so much liquidity in the stock that not only on an intraday time frame, but on a multi-day time frame, will pull back, paint liquidity levels, squeeze those levels, come back down, um, and eventually go back to where they came from. You know, eventually go back, you know, all the way down. <laughs> this will eventually come back all the way down to 0.6 and, and 0.5 and all that stuff. But um, it won't be easy. 
uh, and it's going to take a while. So uh, some interesting notes about the price action. We had a nice little painted level right here, 163, 163, 162. You give a big swipe, it comes back down, and they seem to be supporting it. And some people in my room was like, oh, what if this is a clear out short trap, right? You give a clear out, you soak, and then you do the real squeeze. And uh, based on what we've seen the last two days, uh, that could have happened. And I was like, well, the more extended something gets, the more likely you're going to see long trap action. You're going to see things that look strong, especially on the way up, and it's going to do the opposite of what you think it's going to do, right? So I was like, well, the bearish thesis, the bearish thesis are these painted higher lows, <laughs> right? They're just higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. And on rig tickers, you love to see painted higher lows. You love to see longs think, oh, supports holding, and then the big crack, right? So we got our first big crack, okay? So, sorry, I'm trying to delete these. Other interesting stuff. Uh, what you'll notice a lot on really strong tickers, man, and you'll see this over and over again. It's like, it's a, it's a key concept is that, let's see if I could circle it. Whenever you get, let's see if I can do it better. You know what, I'm just gonna draw it. Whenever you get super heavy down only on super liquid tickers, you know, these strong tickers that are trading hundreds of millions of shares, um, and you, we saw this on, on plays like Seco and BPPH and other plays when um, all that strength came into the market is you get these aggressive pullbacks, you know, these like 30% pullbacks from high day that are just like, if you look at the bigger picture, it's like lower high, lower high, lower high. And it's just like down, like on a longer time frame, this isn't a downtrend, right? With not a lot of um, higher highs to make up for all the lower highs, right? So uh, whenever you get aggressive aggressive pullbacks um market makers will abuse the backside liquidity um and try to initiate some type of very strong looking backside move right so i want to show you what i mean like femi was an example from its top day shout out to keelan in my discord he pointed this one out to me and i remembered the play and i was like yeah this one this one's also another um you know we have this down only, here to here, and you always get these aggressive backside moves here, here, um, because of how much down only there was after the big blow off move, right? The, the, the more aggressive, really strong stocks fade, the more like the more aggressive the backside squeezes are, right? Now that doesn't mean it's going to go to high day. It just means they're it's very likely that they're going to be targeting key liquidity levels, right? So, like, on this move on Femi, you know, you had these, you had VWAP, you had $4, you had these lower highs. Um, and then they did another one in the after hours, you know, because of all these lower highs, lower high, lower high, lower high. This one gets swiped, right? And what happens the next day? Big gap down and 50% fade, right? That, like this is, Femi's a perfect example of how really strong multi-day runners um, swipe backside, give aggressive, insanely aggressive. Like, look, imagine you're short and you think, imagine you're short, like say 420 and the stock is at 330 and you're like, man, look how weak this is. And then suddenly a bunch of volume comes back in like 2% under your average. And it looks like it's going straight up only. Um, a lot of shorts will freak out. They'll freak out, they'll recover, they'll move their wrist down, um, they'll make adjustments to their plan. They'll do all types of stuff like that. And uh, and that's what we got. Uh, same with Tup. Let's go to Tup on its on its crazy day, right? Or one of it, <laughs> one of its many crazy days. Uh, the 31st? Is it this day? No. Is it this day? Dude, Tup had so many crazy days, like actually insane crazy days. Um, yeah, this day, uh, the 1st, August 1st. So, again, crazy multi-day runner. Here's multiple insane short squeezes, right? And what do we get on the backside? What do we get on, like, deep pull, aggressive backside move, doesn't break high day. N deep pull, nothing but lower highs, aggressive backside move, 
deep pull aggress like this is exactly how like rigged crazy strong stocks work um they abuse the backside they abuse shorts trying to you know especially if shorts don't have the read up here and up here and then their averages are stuck down here um they're initiating these squeezes uh, and also on the, what's interesting on the book map is oftentimes the order book is very thin. Like there'll be some orders at the key levels like 5.5 and 5.6 and 5.7. But like in between those levels, there's very little orders. So like when, when shorts um, uh, set their stop losses, you could get these crazy, crazy aggressive moves. And longs are trying to, you know, they see the strength. They see the, the volume come back in. They start slapping. It starts popping, it looks like the trade's working, all that stuff, right? So back to CDIO, very much like TUP, get your crazy, crazy aggressive backside move. And in my Discord, I pointed out, hey guys, I'm very, it's like I'm watching this structure. This is a long pattern right here. It's a long pattern. How it works, it's lower highs, lower lows, and then big volume initiation to the upside, which... If we go back to yesterday, if you remember my video, that's what happened here. Lower highs, lower lows, big, you know, it's the downtrend break into the squeeze, right? It's a long pattern that works. The reason long traps happen is because sometimes they work. <laughs> you have to say, like, sometimes, you know, downtrend breaks work. Sometimes five-minute flags work. They, they work. That's why, they, that's why people go long. You know what I mean? But the higher something goes the more likely you're going to see the same price action and it's not going to work. And what happened on the book map here is really interesting. This is, I, was, I, was, I was doing a, a, you know, a live call out with pictures in my Discord about what I was seeing here. Um, and it's, it's really important to remember the types of games that we're seeing on, on the book in the level two, right? So, uh, so I had my, my short was 170 and I saw this aggressive move. All right, and I'm like, oh, the level I really care about is 175 because 175 has 150,000 shares on the ask up here. So I was like, there's not a lot of shares here, but there's a big order right here. It's like that's really the level I care about. Like anything that happens under this, um, I'm not surprised because how thin the book is, and you know, people could just be slapping, uh, market maker moving the stock on a, on you know after the after the deep. Support swipe, they're moving the stock. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, I was like, all right. Uh, I was, uh, you know, on this push, I was like, is this going to touch 175? Didn't touch 175. And now we're getting your classic long pattern, right? Lower high, the controlled walk down, the lower highs, lower lows. And what happened was really interesting. Right here, right here, this guy took 75,000 shares from the ask here and he moved it. You can see he moved it. The exact moment that this went from, you know, 120,000 to 50,000, this became 75,000. So he's moving 75,000 shares down. And I was like, that's interesting. He, I, and I said that in my Discord, I'm like, he's moving it down. Very interesting. And then he didn't get filled. You got this little push, but he didn't get filled. There's still 75,000 shares. And then right here, he moved it down again. I have to zoom in real close, you'll see. So there's 75K here, and then he moved the 75K here at 162. And I was like, that's really interesting. I was like, um, I was like, this guy's really looking to get filled on these shares, right? This guy really, really wants to get filled 75K. Um, and he's moving it down. And one thing you often see on book map, and you'll see me talk about this in videos, is a lot, a very bearish, bearish thing that happens on book map is when they stack, you get a big push, right? On a, on a, it, during a structure where there's, it's a potential long strap st structure, where you know longs are gonna be chasing, shorts are gonna be afraid to hit it. Um, you get a big push, you get a pullback, and then you get a thick, big, big ask that then gets pushed again, the ask gets filled, there's no bid support below, and then they pull it, right? So um, you'll see the same thing over and over again. So I was like, you know, and I saw that, and that's right here. So to see this volume come in at the bottom, a lot of this is that guy, that 75K ask getting filled, and, he, you, and you get your bullish uh, 
initiation to the upside, right? And every you know anyone who's going long this pattern is at least expecting this high to get broken, if not high day, right? So, um, so you get a big push, and you know uh, it pushes. It's in the 160s. It's chilling. I'm just watching this. By the way, I'm I'm looking up higher, right? I'm looking. I'm seeing that there's an ask at 170 at 172, 40k, 175. So I'm like looking at all these levels. I'm like, okay, like if this long pattern is going to work, it has to have enough volume to really eat through this. And not only that, I'm really not seeing any significant bids build up. Now maybe on Arca, which is not shown on a DXF feed, maybe um. There is more bids on uh, a different exchange that TOS isn't showing, but uh, I'm not seeing a lot of bids follow up. I'm seeing these big asks get filled, and I'm just waiting to see. I'm like, I'm just, I'm holding my average. I'm looking at 171, 170, 175. I'm keeping in mind this guy over here, and it just looks like it's going. It looks like it's going. It looks like it's going, and then you get the massive, massive, massive pull, right? Massive massive pool and this is a fantastic top top pattern on a really extended ticker um, and now I'm much more convinced in some type of swing short play bigger picture play where going in the market close and going into the pre-market tomorrow um, you know I'm just gonna keep an eye on any push into the 170s but I'm uh, after this type of move with this type of extension, um, I'm just going to assume there's weakness. And, you know, the more something pushes, the higher the probability becomes that that type of trade will work out. And, uh, yeah, and, I, and I, love, I love this topping action. I love that this failed. You know, I was already in from earlier, uh, but I love that this failed. And, yeah, I had a nice little unwind. It's closing near the bottom here. has a lot of room to fall. There is some potential for backside games, you know, especially maybe targeting 150. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens in the after hours, how it closes. We'll see what happens um, in the pre-market tomorrow. So that's CDIO. Uh, you know, traded my pattern, got squeezed, re-entered because I was like, oh, how many, you know, this was just a very discretionary read on the soak to get, to get in here. And then, really, I should have added on this long trap here. This was, or even on this push, but especially on this. But um, I didn't. I just held on to my shares. I covered a little bit in the 130s, and I'm just holding the rest. So we'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes. That's CIO. Um, have a good one, guys.